and apostasy. May Allah protect us. So, last week we discussed those things that um, are integrals of dry evolution. And what were those? Or two weeks ago, we discussed integrals of dry evolution. How many were they and what were they? Five. That is correct. Our author mentioned four and then there was an addition. So what are those five? Transferring the earth from ground to the place of ripening. Right. Transferring the earth from ground to the place of ripening. And that was the integral that the, the author of Abhishuja did not mention. So the earth has to be transferred. You can't merely um, roll in the earth or let wind blow dust onto your face and then rub it around. You have to transfer it from where it is to um, one's face and hands. And the second integral was? Intention. The intention. And when does the intention occur? Wiping the face. Wiping the face. It, it, it must exist at both places. From the transfer until the wiping the face. If it, if it disappears, if it's forgotten in between, there's a difference of opinion. But it must at least be present at those two places. From the transfer of the earth to the wiping of the face. I intend, and what would one intend, for instance, for what would one intend to pray Dhuhr if you were going to uh, do Tiamam? What intention would you make? The unlawful lawful. Is that correct? To pray Dhuhr. I intend to make the unlawful lawful. I intend to make obligatory prayer lawful. Okay, I intend to make obligatory prayer lawful. And that intention has to exist from the time I do the knuckle until now. And if it vanishes, you can renew it. And then you wipe the face. Okay. Um, so with that intention, what can you pray? Hmm? One obligatory prayer and any, as many sunnas as you want and other things. That's correct. Okay. Um, then that was the second in uh, integral. What is the third integral? Hmm? Wiping the face. Fourth integral? Fingertips to elbows. Fingertips to elbows. Is, there, is, the, is there a difference of opinion there with respect to the arms? What's that? Yeah, up to, up to and including the wrist bone is a position in the Shafi, among the Shafi Imams. That was the choice of Imam and Nawawi. And that's the position of some other schools, like the Malikis. That's what's obligatory. So there's some leeway there. And then what was the last integral? Order, that's right, five. So transferring earth, um, intention, wiping the face, wiping the hands to either from the fingertips to the up, up and above and including the elbows and or to up above and including the, uh, the wrists and then order. So those are the five integrals. So then now we dealt with things that make tiyamam lawful. We dealt with conditions of tiyamam. We've dealt with integrals of tiyamam. Now we're dealing with those things that make tiyamam invalid. The first of them is what makes wudu invalid. Now, tiyammum, tiyammum might be made because one is unable to make wudu, or it might be made because one is unable to do ghusl, like a woman whose menstruation ends and she has no water. She's doing it instead of ghusl, right? As, as to make things lawful that were, were otherwise unlawful in a state of major ritual impurity. So her tiyammum, um, with respect to the, the tiyammum she did because of not being able to make ghusl, that is not invalidated by what invalidates wudu. But say she does that, say her, her menstruation ends and she, before the dhuhr, and she does tiyammum for the obligatory dhuhr prayer. She does her tiyammum and prays the dhuhr. Then she does something that invalidates wudu. So she's now unable to do things that are forbidden when you don't have wudu. However, she can still do things that are um, permissible when you don't have wudu, though forbidden when you haven't made ghusl. So she could, uh, she could still recite Quran for memory, but she couldn't touch the Quran. Because when she was menstruating, she wasn't allowed to recite the Quran for memory, but she did tiyamam because of that. Then her tiyamam from the things that are uh, per forbidden when you don't have wudu was broken by the invalidators of wudu. So that woman, she did tiyamam for the obligatory prayer, for instance, from menstruation. Then she lost, uh, she, you know, she touched her husband's hand. After that point, she can't pray. She can't touch the Quran. She can't carry the Quran. 
but she could recite the Quran or she could sit in a mosque or something like that that would normally be invalid in a state of menstruation because the tiyamun that was on behalf of the ghusl is not broken with respect to um, the thing, just doing the things that break, is not broken by the things that break will do. Yes? What if a person has enough water for wudu, but they don't have enough water for a ghusl, but they, they're in a major state of A major state of major ritual, ritual impurity? Allah knows best. Allah knows best. We'd have to review that. I've not seen the question mentioned, and it's an excellent question. Um, and Allah knows best. There you go. The likelihood is that we would say that um, they would have to wash as much as they could in ghusl, and then do tiyamam on behalf of what they could not. Though I've not seen the question answered, so I have to say Allah knows best. Are there any other questions on that point? It's somewhat obscure, but no, it's clear? Okay. It's clear? Tamam. All right, the second point, there's some detail too as well. Um, he, he translates it as, La ilaha illallah. Um, he said, seeing or finding water before praying. Okay, so, actually, that's the way that he phrased it here. He said, Ru'ya til ma' Qabla waqt salah or fi ghayri waqt salah Seeing water in other than the time of prayer, meaning the action of prayer, right? So if you see water 